understand what's going on. You're under arrest. What? Why? Public indecency and performing without a cabaret license. You need a license to do that? Seriously? Yeah, yeah, you can bitch all about it to your friend in the back seat there. Go ahead. Get in hey. there. No. I thought my wife bailed me out. No, I did. Uh-huh. Oh. Thanks. Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Do you love it? Do I love what? Comedy. Stand-up. Do you love it? Seriously? Well, I've been doing it a while. Okay, let's put it like this. If there was anything else in the entire world that I could possibly do to earn a living, I would. Anything. I'm talking dry cleaners to the clan, crippled kid portrait painter, slaughterhouse attendant. If someone said to me, Leonard, you can either read a guy's head or do two weeks at the Copa, I'd say pass the fucking salt. It's a terrible, terrible job. It should not exist. Like cancer and God. Sorry. I went to the Varric station instead. Why the hell would you do that? Because you like Varric better. Jesus, honey, you don't get to pick. But do you love it? Yeah. He loves it. Mary Maisel. Yes. Your bail's posted. Lipstick, cigarettes. Hey, I had some Necco wafers in here. They're gone. A little less than the crime doesn't pay. You got a code, it's cold out. Susie probably has it. You're not Susie. Nope. Thought Susie bailed me out. I was working down the street, heard some cute uptown chick got arrested doing a set. I put two and two together. Thanks. I guess we're even. Hey, I threw in cab fare. Oh, rats. I will get you a lawyer. Lawyer talk, I'd like you to leave. Thanks again, Lenny, really. Anytime. Oh, hey, I'm introducing your friend's combo, the Vanguard Friday night. You should come by. They're both of you. We'll see. I will uh, very seriously consider that, Mr. Bruce. Thank you. See you. Figures. What? You get arrested, you get bailed out by Lenny Bruce. If I got arrested, I'd be bailed out by whatever village Tinkerbell has blowjob money left over from the night before. I thought I wasn't allowed back here. You're not. But you weren't allowed to give me stage time. I'm not. I mean, what the hell is going Jesus. on? Jesus. You giving out free cars tonight or what? This is all for you, asshole. Hello, Amanda Gleason. What are you doing? What is going on here? I am doing what is unheard of in this business. It's called a very nice thing. Oh, well, then thank you. Thanks, Susie. She set this up. Are you going on like that? Thank you. What? No. Is it going to be a snowstorm in here? No. You keep it clean for the hussy? It's coming off. It's coming off. Okay. So, I'm going up there to do a set for nothing. I'm going to say hello, blah, blah, blah and then I'm gonna hand the mic off to you. Uh, the only thing I ask, no, demand. I am not introducing you as Amanda Gleason. You've gotta find a better fucking name. Way ahead of you. Okay, you ready? Aye. Show you. You went right out of here, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for me. My name is Mrs. Maisel. Thank you and good night! God, the arrogance. I've created a monster. You're Norman Mailer in a cocktail dress. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Just tell me, was it good? Oh, come on, you don't get to say it, do you? Okay, you're up. I'm not going on after that. Are you kidding me? You afraid to follow a girl? Always. And everywhere. He knows I'm coming, Lenny. It's all right, Perry. She's my mother. You didn't leave my name. Perry's having a heart attack. I'm very sorry, Perry. It won't happen again. The people's names are supposed to be on the list. That's how it works. There goes the next president of the United States. Never mind, Tim. Let me look at you. Good suit, nice tie, hair's fine. Get ready for your intro. Only he goes on stage. Oh, Perry knows me better than I thought. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here is a very shocking comedian, the most shocking comedian of our time, a young man who is skyrocketing to fame, Lenny Bruce. Tits up. Thanks. You'll explain that when I get there? Yes, I will. Maybe I should just keep you company so no other man makes the mistake I just did. I appreciate you wanting to be the savior of my reputation, but I'm busy writing dick jokes, so if you don't mind. Number three really paints a picture. What on earth are you doing here? 
I am living here. In Florida? At some point, every Jew must live in Florida. It's in the Torah. Wow. You know, it's weird. I never picture you living anywhere. You just exist. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but I do live places, and right now, it's here. I got a key, I get mail, I wear an apron. Must go good with that tie. I heard Shy was in town, so I thought I would stop by and say hello. Hello. Goodbye. You want to sit? Three in the afternoon. A pen, a notebook, and a drink. All you need is a social disease, and you are officially a road comic. How long are you in town? <laughs> Two frizz-filled weeks. Good. I'm heading out of town for a couple of days to make some money. Huh? Apparently, alimony means money. I did not know that. When I get back, we should grab a drink. I would love that. I will give you a ring. I was serious about number three. The comparison to William Frawley is particularly inspired. Uh, but actually, Brian, I'm here with someone special tonight. Uh, someone I love dearly, almost as much as I love myself. Uh, uh, sweetheart, uh, where are... Ah, there you are. <laughs> Lenny. Looks like we have a wandering... What are you doing? Bruce. Well, it's time yeah, everybody it's knows, don't you think? Uh, I need to powder things. What is on your hands? Frosting. Other hand, other hand. Oh, he's back. Well, who have we here? Bri, I'd like you to meet my wife, or, or possibly my sister. What are you, my wife or my sister? Depends on what state we're in. Let's go wife, what the hell? Well, it's nice to meet you, whoever you are. It's nice to meet you, too. She's a very big fan. She called in sick to work tonight just to be here. Oh, what do you do? I'm a Mountie. Yes, she's very good with horses. And moose. And squirrel. Female Mountie, I didn't know there were female Mounties. Are you kidding? Have you seen the hats? There's only female Mounties. <laughs> so how long have you two been married and or related? Oh, it's been six. At uh, seven. You forgot our time at sea. Yes, lost at sea. I almost killed you and ate you. Yeah, but then we remembered fish. Seven fun filled Weeks. years. <laughs> we gotta rehearse this next time. <laughs> well, you make a very handsome couple. Oh, well, we get our looks from our mother. Oh, they just put out some new onion dip, and I heard Betty Bacall is a notorious double dipper. I've gotta go. <laughs> well, it was nice to meet you. Uh, Rhoda. Shahrazad. <laughs> Shahrazad Rhoda Maisel. Quite a culturally confusing mouthful. <laughs> You like a man who has a lease. Depends on the man. Depends on the lease. I'm paid up through Friday. <laughs> oh, it's nice being on the water. Where are you living, by the way? I'm not actually living anywhere. Well, I'm on tour now, so I live wherever the tour is. And when I get back, I'll have to find a place. I suppose I can stay at my in-laws. Well, ex-in-laws. My parents are there now. Well, no, they're actually here now since they can't stand them, so I probably can't live there either. The hotel is looking pretty good to you right now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this is me. Nice, shiny number three. <laughs> yes, uh, it was actually 13, but the one fell off. If you lived in an apartment, you could call the super about that. And what would he do? Nothing, but you'd have somebody to call. And it works. Yes. The evening is going swimmingly so far. So what did you think of my act? I thought it was sensational. Thank you. I'm gonna get a cab. I can get you one. I'm okay. Catch. Hey. Maybe someday, before I'm dead. It's a date. I thought I recognized that unique combination of lilt and intensity. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, 
well, I hate to steal your line, but what the hell are you doing here? You have to leave. I'm about to go on. Oh, shit. Are you stripping now? I know the Shy Baldwin thing was tough, but there's nicer places. I'm the comic. Here? Yes, and I'm about to go on, and I am still honing and experimenting, so go away. You want me to go away? Yes. Because I would make you nervous. You would make me nervous. Don't smile. Bad smile. I got a story for you. Back in high school, Mepham High in Belmore, out on Long Island, I took this speech class. One day, the teacher stands me up in front of everybody and gives me a topic. Zoos, are they good or bad, some shit like that. Now, I was supposed to be against them. Told me to take five full minutes to make my case. Now, I'm feeling fairly confident about the subject, so I start my little spiel going on about how animals shouldn't be in cages and how we're the real animals for putting them there in the first place, when all of a sudden, I get beamed in the head by an eraser. I checked to see who threw it, and it was the fucking teacher. Now, I'm surprised, to say the least, but I continue my little speech with a masterful segue into the science of evolution and how we're no less animal than any other of God's creatures, that is, if God exists, I threw that in, when another fucking eraser hits me in the fucking head. And it's like that every 10 seconds for the rest of my speech. Something coming at my head. Erasers, chalk, crumpled paper, a half-eaten apple. But I soldier on and get through the five minutes. Afterwards, I asked my teacher, what was that all about? And she says, Mr. Schneider, for I was Schneider at the time, uh, Mr. Schneider, I was simply training you to block out distractions. It's your job to stay focused despite whatever's coming at you, and you did good. Now, this seemed like bullshit at the time, but it turned out to be a very valuable lesson. It trained me for what I do now. So, tonight, Mrs. Maisel, your version of erasers and chalk and half-eaten apples will be me staying for your gig. No. This isn't Belmore. Everything is Belmore. Mrs. Nasal, time to start the show. I think it's time to start the show. Fine, stay, but do not sit where I can see you. Oh, now I'm definitely gonna sit where you can see me. What are you doing? I have to take a piss. Well, come back upstairs and use the bathroom. If I use your bathroom, you'll play music. I don't want a soundtrack while I pee. Finally. Look, I'm, I know I'm, here. I'm sorry. What do you think happened last night? No, it, it's for the taxi, the shoe polishing, the blinds. Christ! Keeping a safe distance? Respectful distance, I'd like to say. Are you afraid of me because I talk to my shoes? Some men find that wildly attractive. I think there are many things about you men would find wildly attractive. You know you can sit on the entire chair. I'm fine. You look like one of the Belenders balancing there like that. It... I'm wearing... I'm good. You what? What are you wearing? My show corset. <laughs> you have a show corset? Yes. How is this different from, say, your dentist's corset? It's much more likely to suffocate me. It's also prettier. Yep. It's always the pretty ones who try to kill you. Oh, boy. What? I did not plan this. Getting me back here? Innocent. Get Roy Cohen on the phone right now. You mean you didn't alter the atmosphere, causing it to snow, and then organize a raid at the exact moment I came off stage? What, I'm not important enough to go through all that trouble for? You are more important than God. You paid attention. To you? Always. Midge? Yeah? I gotta see the show corset. Lenny. I'm sorry. I'm an observer of the human condition. It's the way God made me. Okay. If we do this. Oops. If we take our clothes off and we do some very blue things in this very blue room. Wow, do I not know which way this is going? I need you to look me in the eye first and promise that you will never, ever forget that I am very, very funny. 
first and foremost. I'm serious, Lenny. I will be laughing through the entire thing. I promise. This is about you. You wanted me to remember you're funny, right? That night, you didn't want me to think of you as just a girl. You wanted me to think of you as a comic. Well, don't you forget that I'm a comic too. Don't you dare look at me as someone to be pitied or helped or fixed. I do not want or need that, especially from you. I don't want to fix you. 90% of this game is how they see you. They see you hanging with Tony Bennett. They think you deserve to be there. They see you hauled off to jail for saying fuck at a strip club. They think you deserve that also. Wise up. I'm not hiding. I have a plan. Don't plan. Work. Just work and keep working. There is a moment in this business. Windows open. If you miss it, it closes. Just don't. If you blow this midge, I swear. You will break my fucking heart. <laughs>